Landlords in New York say that a bill that was recently signed into law by the governor of New York will destroy their opportunities to get out of the rent stabilization law of 2019 and destroy their businesses at the same time. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. And once again, it's coming out of the state of New York. So I've talked a lot about how New York, they have these rent control laws in place that make it very, very difficult to operate your business there, especially with all of the recent inflation that there's been throughout the entire country. Landlords haven't been able to keep up with the amount of money they need to you know, cover their expenses. So some are holding on by a thread. Some have already gone bankrupt. And, you know, it's a really, really bad thing, especially when you look and you say, hey, our buildings, our properties are valued based upon our rents. And when our rents are unable to increase to a certain amount, well, our properties are actually getting devalued. And I've, I've talked uh, about how Landlords are facing declining property values due to the fact that they can't raise their rents. And it's it's horrible. It's a horrible thing for the market. So I don't think that the tenants, they even know that, oh, well, the reason why things are so rough in New York is a great deal of it has to do with the bureaucracy, with all these laws and rules and regulations that they supported, that they passed. They thought that rent control was actually going to make housing more affordable. But what it really did was it made housing more scarce. And by having any properties that were not covered by rent control policies, that meant that those properties that aren't under rent control, they are extremely expensive. In fact, so expensive that they drove up the cost of renting in New York so that it is the highest and the most expensive in the entire country. So yeah, it's ridiculous to me that in a place with rent control, which you know the rent control has been in place for you know decades, it still has the most expensive housing in the entire country. Insane. So that tells you right there that the rent control policies don't work. And there's no way that you could implement these rent control policies where they do work because it doesn't take into consideration human psychology. Okay. Rent control policies, they, they're a blanket thing. They, they don't work because they don't take into consideration the fact that, Hey, somebody who has a three bedroom unit, right? If they're a single person, they're not going to give that unit up if it's under rent control to go move into a more expensive or even a, a, a apartment that costs the exact same. That's a one bedroom. So you have a mismatch between the people who have the rent controlled units and the people who need the rent control units. Then because there's a limited number of rent control units, because nobody's building new ones, those units are in high demand. And in many cases, the uh, people living in them are subletting them at full market price. So yeah, I mean, it's there's so many, so many things that make rent control bad, but you know, like when I got, when I started reading this article, nothing surprises me. Nothing surprises me about any of this stuff. I mean, if you knew anything about basic economics, you'd be like, oh yeah, well, you know what? This is going to be a complete failure. But you know, th now they're, they're saying, okay, landlords are using too many uh, loopholes and exemptions to get out of this. Well, we're going to, you know, we're going to create new laws to, you know, stitch up those uh, uh, holes that were in the original law. And here's the problem with that. The more laws they pass, you know, the more nightmarish this whole thing becomes because it will restrict landlords so much that it will put them out of business. It will destroy their property rights. And you know, we're going to see properties falling into just awful disrepair as these things happen. Okay. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Are you surprised that the city of New York and the people there, you know, they aren't even happy with a law that was passed a mere four years ago and that they're already trying to modify the law to make it even more restrictive. And guess what? Two, three years from now, they're going to be like, oh, well, we didn't do enough now, then either back in 2023. So we got to uh, modify the law again. And, you know, they're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep doing that. And it's going to be awful. But anyway, let me get into this article because it is interesting. This article is coming from TheRealDeal.com. And it says, Hochul signs rent bill that landlords call disaster. 
Yeah. <laughs> they said it as well as I could. But anyway, let's get into the article. In a major blow to landlords, the governor on Friday signed a bill that expands the definition of fraud in rent overcharge cases. The legislation enacted by Governor Kathy Hochul amends the definition of fraud and codifies the rules that limit the rent on Frankenstein apartments, a term used to describe when vacant rent-regulated apartments are combined. After the bill's passage in June, landlords ramped up their warnings that the measure would lead to a flood of rent overcharge cases, including against property owners who are presumed guilty if they cannot find long-lost records about building renovations. So yeah, they, I, I believe that the way the law works is that <clears throat> if, a per, if a unit becomes unregulated, right, and you don't have evidence that, oh, you did certain renovations in order to bring it up to um, a market rate, right, then um, they, you've basically been overcharging your tenants for years. So let's say that... <clears throat> You, you own a rent-controlled unit, right? You did substantial renovations to this unit 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, after you did those renovations, you rose the rents up to market rate, right? But you don't have all of the paperwork anymore because that was a long time ago. So, or that might even been a different property owner. But, you know, so the, the tenant comes back and they say, hey, this place was... Uh, they've been charging higher rent, you know, it never was renovated or um, the renovations didn't meet the standards or whatever, right? And so you need to back pay me all of the rent that I've been overcharged for the last X number of years. You know, I, I hope I'm explaining that uh, well enough for the people watching this video, right? But anyway, this is a complicated issue created by stupid laws that make no sense. And so, you know, <laughs> What, what do I always say? I always say I wouldn't even invest in a place where I have to even do a major renovation in order to bring my rents up, okay? But, you know, I, it's hard to blame the landlords, the property owners up in New York because everything changed significantly within the last five years. When In 2019, when they passed this rent stabilization law, it made it so much more difficult for landlords in order to make money. And so they, a lot of them, they just got caught in this trap. You know, they got caught in a trap and now they're sitting there and they're still trying to fight it. And we are going on five years later. And I, I just don't see an out at this point. Like, I don't think that the law is going to get repealed. I don't think that the Supreme Court is going to take up the case against it. I think that a lot of landlords, therefore, are going to lose a ton of money. Any mistake, the way this bill is written, can possibly be interpreted as fraud, real estate attorney Zachary Rothkin said in an interview this month. This is the last thing that the rent stabilized market needed, and I would go further and say that this is the last thing that tenants needed, he added, alluding to the argument that large judgments would suck up revenue needed to maintain buildings. When reached on Friday, Jay Martin, Executive Director of Community Housing Improvement Program, called the law a disaster. This could very well be the nail in the coffin for rent stabilized housing, he said. You know, like, I don't want to see landlords go bankrupt, but you know something that really really impacts the market negatively and affects a lot of mostly tenants that would be a good thing because that would maybe be a sign to these politicians who put this idiotic laws in place that something needs to change you know my only gripe would be then that okay they implement even worse policies that you know have even more negative side effects you know and I'm pretty sure that's the sort of thing to happen because a lot of these politicians are socialists, okay? They want the landlords to go bankrupt. They want the government to have to take over housing, and they think that is the ultimate solution. And, you know, you and I both know that that is not the case. But, you know, I, I feel like common sense would have to prevail, knowing that the government doesn't have the ability to take over, uh, you know, on a large scale, all the housing, it would just mean that, hey, we have to change the law so the landlords can actually renovate their buildings and make a profit, okay? Otherwise, we're just gonna have a lot of people either living in substandard housing or they're gonna end up without any housing at all. 
Tenant advocates and the bill sponsors have said the bill brings much needed clarity to the 2019 Housing Stability Tenant Protection Act and closes a loophole long exploited by landlords to deregulate housing. Some aspects of the bill, which was sponsored by Senator Brian Kavanaugh and Assembly Member Linda Rosenthal, were approved earlier this year through a separate process. In October, the state's housing regulator certified changes to how rents are sent for vacant regulated units when they are combined and for deregulating stabilized buildings through substantial rehabilitation. So yeah, I had mentioned before that one of the, the things that landlords were doing in New York in order to increase their rents, right, was by combining two rent regulated units that are like right next to each other into one giant unit. And they call that like creating like a Frankenstein unit. So let's say, for example, you have a rent regulated unit over here and the rent in it is a thousand dollars a month and you have another rent regulated unit right next to it and its rent is a thousand dollars a month. Well, you tear out the walls in between those two units, right? And they go from two different two bedroom units and now you have one four bedroom unit okay and then that four bedroom unit it doesn't rent for a mere two thousand dollars a month you know the combined rent from those two separate ones no it might rent for four or five thousand dollars a month so substantially more than each individual unit could have paid you and because you did major renovations you're able to bring those rents all the way up to the market rate now they've closed that loophole they say no that isn't right that isn't fair and, you know, by taking that ability away from the landlords, one of the very few opportunities landlords had to, you know, bring their units up to market rates, well, they are going to face even more pressure, even more pressure because they cannot make money, okay? Taking away a business's ability to make money is dumb, it is so dumb because there's only one outcome that you're going to see, and that is bankruptcy. That is it, period. And then, you know, like, or you, you there, there is the other opportunity for, and this is for the very bad players and the people they call slumlords. You know, I've mentioned before that these sort of laws, they create some slumlords, okay? They don't prevent slumlords, they create them. They create a culture of, I'm not gonna fix anything ever. The heat will have to be out for years on end. The, the place will be so dilapidated, so falling apart. And that is the only way those people are able to make money because if they were actually to do all of the repairs, all of the maintenance, fix all the expenditures, pay all their bills on time, et cetera, they would go bankrupt. And so that's why you know these sort of laws, they literally create slumlords. But anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Um, interesting article. You know, uh, I hate rent control. I'll never, ever stop trying to argue against this sort of thing. Um, if you're more interested in uh, what more this article has to say, I'll put a link in the description down below.